Hi folks, the Filipino Pea here. And today I'm gonna do something a little different. When I dip into my mailbag, I usually give people relationship advice, but I've received so many other questions about the Philippines that I thought it'd be fun to tackle some of those. We've got someone who's asking about the best way to help his Filipinas family start a business so he won't have to support them. We've got another person who's wondering why so few Filipinas know how to kiss. And we're actually gonna get my mom on the phone to explain a rather bizarre cultural tradition. Trust me, this is gonna be fun. So let's start with a question from Devin O oh from Australia. Devin says, Hello P, I'm hoping you can help me with an idea I came up with. My Filipino fiancé lives in Bohol, but I won't be in the Philippines until next year. Her family isn't as poor as some families you've described, but they're still always in need of money. And of course, the duty has somehow fallen on my fiancé to provide. In order not to have this become a recurring issue, I thought I could help him start a family business so they could earn their own money. Not only would it relieve the pressure on me, but I'm sure they'd feel better about providing for themselves. Can you advise me on my options and tell me if this is a reasonable solution to the problem? Okay, Devin, I think I can help you. And as always, there's good news and bad news. So let me start with the bad. I hate to say it, but this is something you guys need to know if you don't already. Most Filipinos have no idea how money or business works. The concepts that seem obvious and second nature to you are completely alien to us. That's one reason why we're always broke. You know how Filipinos usually have good voices and it seems like we were born knowing how to sing? Well, to us, it seems like you folks were born knowing how to make money, a talent we simply don't have. Even if you or your fiancé start a business from scratch, get it turning a healthy profit, and turn it over to the family, there's a very good chance that it'll fail within a few months. Now, that's not always the case. Some Filipinos are business savvy and hardworking enough to make it last, but the odds are never in your favor. The most common reason for failure is that instead of replacing the inventory, Filipinos have a bad habit of spending all the operating capital before they pay the monthly bills, which might sound like something a five-year-old would know not to do, but it happens all the time here. We also commit the sin of instantly giving credit to anyone who asks for it. Friends, neighbors, other family members, anyone who says they'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. I've heard from literally hundreds of frustrated men who used their money and knowledge and creativity to start a business, then handed it to a Filipina's family, only to have it fail within a few months due to mismanagement. But now, the good news! There are definitely ways to give them an opportunity to succeed on their own without breaking the bank. Start them out small, with a modest investment that you can afford to lose, and I would strongly suggest that you open a food stand. Even just 400 US dollars is enough to set up a roadside stand, selling grilled chicken or pork. That amount of money will get him the stand, the stainless steel serving trays, and plenty of food to sell. The business permit is only around 200 pesos from the barangay, or $4. And there's not even any health department inspections to worry about. They can cook the food in their own kitchen and put the stand by the road in front of their house. I know it sounds kind of like a kid's lemonade stand, but it's done all the time here. And yes, it makes money. All you have to do is walk down almost any street in the Philippines and you'll see plenty of stands just like the ones I'm talking about. The trick is getting the 400 bucks to open one. Sounds easy, right? But we never seem to be able to come up with the capital. And that's where you have an opportunity to use your investment and their labor. If they show some initiative and at least break even, then maybe invest a little more, buy a few stools for customers to sit at, and maybe a big umbrella to cover everyone in shade. You'll be surprised at how these things can grow. 
if they're willing to work for it. You'll have to let your fiancé take the lead until it's well established, and you'll need to keep an eye on them from time to time after that. But all you're risking is a few hundred bucks, and compared to what you have to gain, that's nothing. Best of luck, Devin, and keep us posted. Maybe you can send us a picture of the place after a while so we can all see what just a little money can buy. Okay, next we have an email from Perry G in New Zealand, who writes, P, last week I watched your video discussing how Filipinas don't know how to French kiss. I thought it was just my bad luck. But the only two Filipinas I've dated since I've been here have had the same affliction. As soon as the kissing became more passionate, both of them acted as if my tongue was an unwelcome visitor in their mouths. At first I thought it was just a question of shyness, but it turned out the inhibition wasn't the issue, since the rest of the evening's activities were more than adequate. And I can personally confirm your claim that Filipinas do indeed like to hold the lumber while you slumber. See, I told you. Since you seem to be the Filipina sex guru, perhaps you can explain why there seems to be no knowledge of deep kissing in your country. Well, Perry, um, thanks. I appreciate your confidence, but I wouldn't call me the Filipina sex guru. I think the term you're looking for is sex goddess. Joke lang. <laughs> but it's true that Filipinos generally don't use our tongues with each other when it comes to foreplay or any other kind of play, which takes a lot of interesting activities off the table. And believe me, there's a lot of fun things you can do on a table. Filipinos are more about the basic birds and bees when it comes to sex. More of a insert tab A into slot B kind of thing. We'd be more comfortable with a manual from Ikea than the Kama Sutra. Western guys assume that everyone knows how the French kiss, but apparently the French told everyone except the Filipinos because it still doesn't come naturally to us. So don't assume you got a defective one or that your Filipino is broken. It's just something a lot of us have never been exposed to. So just be gentle and teach. And don't confuse inexperience with a lack of willingness to learn. It'll be a valuable lesson that'll benefit the teacher as well as the student. Next, we have a question from Mats T in Norway. Ms. P, I understand that Tagalog is the official language of the Philippines, so why are so many university classes taught in English? Well, that was short and sweet, Mats, but I'm afraid my answer is going to be a bit longer. Not only are all college level courses taught in English, but the vast majority of courses from elementary to high school are taught in English too. And the reason might surprise you. It's because it's almost impossible to teach courses like math or biology or physics in Tagalog. Our language isn't that efficient. It uses too many words to say the same thing. And explaining a concept like percentage would take forever in Tagalog. And there's a perfectly good English word for it. Western science and medicine already have words for the more complicated terms, so it's easier to just use those in our education system. Many Filipinos enter the field of nursing in the West, so it's beneficial for them to learn English in general and English medical terms in particular. But this is nothing new because English borrows heavily from other languages, especially in the STEM fields, where a lot of terms are Latin and Greek, so we're just doing the same thing. You borrow from them, and we borrow from you. And finally, I've gotten the same question from several of you folks regarding a comment I made during an interview with a woman named Glenda, where I described how confused I was when I started my first menstrual cycle at 12 years old. And my mom's reaction was to throw flowers at me. You guys asked me why she did that, and I honestly had no clue. So why don't we get her on the phone and ask? Hi, Mom. Hi. Well, I hope you can clear something up for me after all these years. Remember when I had my first period and you were chasing me around the house and you were throwing flowers at me? What was that all about, Mom? Para di ka mag-mara, di ka mad-as flowers, red lips. 
Oh, so you were throwing red flowers at me. So my lips would stay red despite the loss of blood. Wait a second. Which lips are we talking about, mom? Because all of mine stayed brown. So I guess it didn't work. <laughs> so anyway, I've got another question. Um, remember when I was little and we'd be outside collecting wood and you never wanted me to pee outside, especially around big trees because you said I might get pregnant. That always confused me. So how was I going to get pregnant? Siyempre, yung may, di ka pwede mag-ihi-ihi bisan diin kasi may mga, may nakatira sa dagkong kahoy. Tapos, sayo nga, di ka pa tayo ihi kay bay malakaran ko no magbuburod. Oh, so... Mom says that if a little girl pees outside near a big tree, the fairies can get her pregnant. Well, I know that fairies have really, really small equipment, Mom, but don't you think I'd feel something if they tried to impregnate me? Is that how you got pregnant with me, Mom? Was my dad actually a fairy? All right, well, thanks, Mom. We have some pretty strange superstitions here in the Philippines. And thank you so much for clearing that up for me. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, we Filipinos and our wacky beliefs. Well, it took 20 years, but at least now I know what was going on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll be back on Tuesday with something unexpectedly interesting. Till then, folks. Service center, IT department, did you try turning her off and on again? Okay, what model is she? A Tampo 2000? Yeah, the Filipina series is kind of twitchy. What seems to be the problem? Oh no, sir, that's not an error. That's actually how they're programmed. When you even just look at another female bot, it activates their temper routine. Did it just totally shut down for a few hours? Not a sound. Yep. That's what they're supposed to do. Just give it a while and she'll power up again. Anything else I can help you with? It's taking cash out of your wallet when you're not looking? Well, we can try disabling the scamming subroutine, but that's usually hardwired into the newer models. Okay, it's obvious you're having a lot of trouble with your Filipina bot. Did you get the extended warranty? Yeah, I know. It's really expensive on that series. Well, maybe you just want to trade her in for a Western model. We're running a special right now on the blue-haired fembot. And one model in particular, the Karen 2023, is so cheap, they're practically giving it away. Sir? Hello? Hello? Are you ready? Because it's time for a word from your captain. If you've abandoned ship in the West, then you're looking for a Filipina first mate. Just listen to your Captain P. And you'll be shouting, Thar she blows in no time at all. There's nothing like the Philippines to put a little fire in the hole. And if you join me, crew, I'll get you there. Right as rain. So subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you hear about any course corrections. And check out my Patreon page for exclusive vids and features. And for all you new seamen, stay off me poop deck. Don't be asking me to blow the man down and keep your hands off me booty. <laughs>